Welcome to Dead Man Talking. Tonight's story is from the incredible mind of another underscore pen over on Reddit No Sleep. As ever, please do let me know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. Well, it really does help build the channel and the community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. And so, with that aside, let's get into tonight's story, entitled He Who Hunts Monsters. Let's get straight into that. A corpse found with its bones and organs crushed. The way the corpses had been found, it was like they had walked for miles after they died. It was entirely inexplicable and so far six separate bodies were found in the same condition over the last two months. But the police, of course, had wanted nothing to do with it. They had investigated every death in a half-assed manner, hiding what really happened. Not like they would have listened to a black private investigator anyway. I had been turned onto the case by a poor family. Their eldest son had moved out, and he went missing about a month later. I had to break into the morgue to gain access to the files and then I found more files on similar deaths. The trail of bodies began at the airbase about 50 miles out of town. On the side of a highway, a lead scientist at this airbase was found dead. William Barkett was found with almost all of his bones broken, but the autopsy showed he'd been dead for about a week, but his body had been moved by some force, his dead legs walking for three days. And finally, his body had been left on the side of the road, William's body was left by a broken-down car. The owner of the car, Lorette Williams, was found dead in a lot just outside of town, and conveniently by Daniel Estrada's apartment. And Daniel Estrada was the young man whose family had come to me, but the trail hadn't ended there. Daniel's body had been in the city, stabbed. An unnamed homeless man with a bloody knife had been found, under the same circumstances. All bones broken, the internal cavities disfigured, no new body had been found, but so far, all the bodies have been found in a straight line. I had an idea as to where the next body would be. I was driving to the spot now. The bodies always lasted about 50 miles and three days before finally giving out. The spot was outside of town, sparsely populated by just a small hamlet. I didn't know if it was a killer or some weird fucking science experiment that left these people dead like this, but I didn't care. This was bigger than Daniel Estrada, and the cops were too busy with their heads up their asses. People were dying, and this trail would keep on going. And tonight marked the third night since the homeless man had been found, and thankfully I had made it to the spot. I parked my car and made sure I had it gone, and walked into the park that marked 50 miles from the homeless man and waited. Waiting was the worst part. I kept my left hand on my gun and my eyes peeled. After a few minutes, I heard rustling in the bushes. I grabbed my gun and kept my hands in the folds of my trench coat, so it was concealed. An elderly white man walked out of the bushes. I didn't know if it was my killer or what, but I watched him carefully as he stared at me. What are you doing out of this time, son? He asked me. I looked him over for a second. Well, there was no corpse with him, and he didn't look like he had the strength to kill anyone. I'm a private investigator. I'm working on a case out here. I replied as I hosted my gun. What kind of case? Well, there's been a string of killings, and based on every case in that string, within the hour, there's going to be a body here, and then someone else is going to disappear. Jesus Christ. Aren't the cops supposed to take care of that? Yeah, they are, but they decided it ain't worth their time. Well, the old man went on to reply before there was more rustling in the bushes. Well, this was much different rustling, like something was being forcibly pushed. I reached for my gun again, and a desecrated body, walking by no accord of its own, limped from the trees. What the hell is that? The old man cried. I am... The corpse groaned in an unearthly voice. I raised my gun. Stay back! I yelled. And still, it advanced towards the old man. He cried in fear and turned to run but his age was with him. It came closer as he fell over. If I didn't react, 
something bad would happen. I shot the body twice and it just staggered back a few steps. I fired twice more, one shot hitting its head. and The emaciated body fell. The old man, still trembling, got up. Thank you, he said, getting up. Then, with a vigor, the body jumped up and grabbed the old man. He cried in terror and I watched as the black mass left the corpse and forced its way into the man. I didn't know if I could shoot or if I could help the old man, but I watched in terror, in confusion, as this mass took the man. He resisted, but he was too weak to stop it. The sound, I was fucking vile. I held my gun as the old man got up, but with something else at the helm. What the hell are you? I am, it said. You what? I don't no. What the hell do you mean? Why are you doing this? I just want to be whole. What do you mean? I want to be whole. And then it, and what was formerly the old man's body, started walking away. Hey, you can't just walk away, I yelled. I can, it replied, and then started to run at an unnatural speed. I ran after it as it peeled into the brush. Stop! Come back! I shouted. It just kept on running. I raised my gun hastily and fired twice more. One shot caught the old man's back and the other missed. And then it just went faster. I was able to keep up with the noise until it went quiet. And still sprinting, I broke into a clearing and tripped over something soft. I got up and turned to see the body of the old man. The thing that had taken control of him was gone, just the corpse on the ground. Unlike the other bodies it had taken, though, the old man wasn't as disfigured. The largest injury on him was the bullet hole I had put in him. I yelled out, Where are you? Here, it replied from somewhere in the shadows. I fired in the direction I heard the voice. Five bullets left. Why are you doing this? I asked. Two Behold, it replied from a different location, and in the gloom of the night, I shot in a direction I heard it. Four bullets left. Won't work. No body for you to hit, it said, as if half amused. What does that mean? What does any of this mean? I have no body. Not whole. Just made. I want to be whole. To live like you do. And I fired again, three bullets. What do you mean? I said in a confused terror. Science experiment. Dr. Will was part of the work to make a soul, and it made me. And how do you know that? I said, voice shaking. When I take a body, I learn. I learned who was there. I feel bad for breaking things, but but I must be whole. I fired again, two bullets now. I had no way of knowing if I had done anything, but the sickening realization fell over me. It could eat the gunshots, and it was baiting me. I was helpless without my gun, and as the terror receded a small amount, I knew I needed to run. I was the next candidate for this thing's attempt to be, to be whole. And I started backing away and asked, If you feel bad about breaking things, why do you do it? I need to be whole. Too long without a body, and I hurt. And continuing to back up, I replied, So you kill others to live? I didn't know then, but I know how not to break things now. I just need to take a body until I find an empty one. It hadn't moved in a second, and looking into the woods, I could see a dim red glow. Two eyes. Its eyes. I raised my gun and fired, and the bullet landed between them, and I turned to run. Only one bullet now. And something suddenly grabbed my back, like viscous fluid. And with a cry of terror, I fell backwards, hoping to crush it. And it worked. But I knew I wasn't getting away. 
I also knew that it had told me enough. And without a body, it would die. And it needed the brain of a body to be intact to use it. One more bullet. In a final act of defiance, I raised my gun to my own head and pulled the trigger. And something grabbed my wrist, and it all went dark as I felt an impressive weight come over me. When I woke up in my car, I felt strange. I felt whole. I had a sickening feeling of knowing. It had learned not to break things. It just needed a body to find an empty vessel. I rolled down my window and vomited. And as I wondered who I was, what I was. I remember the advice I had heard from a grizzled detective when I first started being a P.I. He who hunts monsters must take care that he doesn't become one. Wow, 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 wow. Certainly another one. Wow. Short but intriguing story there from the incredible mind of another pen over on Reddit, no sleep. Big thank you, another, for allowing me to narrate your story on the show. I really hope you enjoy my rendition and certainly look forward to more of your work in the future. Guys and girls, as ever, you know the drill. Please do let me know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. If you're an aspiring author or would just like to have a crack at things, want to get in touch with myself at the brand new contact email, which is as on screen. Contact the dead one at gmail.com. I really look forward to hearing from you. I hope everyone's having a fantastic week at work or school, or perhaps you're studying. Whatever it is that you do, I hope you're getting stuck in and taking a fight back to life. But above all, guys, remember, be safe, not sorry.